Hello and welcome to this video where we'll be exploring the fastest way to level up in Kingdom Hearts 3 Chain of Memories. One thing you might be asking yourself is why I make this video when we already have plenty that do the exact same thing. The explanation is simple. I was recently in the process of leveling up Sora and Riku to level 99 and as most people I got frustrated by how long it took. So I scoured the internet to find information on how to do this best. I wasn't impressed. What I found was techniques that are certainly faster than just normal fighting, but it didn't seem like people had bothered to check if it was the fastest. I really wish that somebody had taken their time to meticulously go through the different options and calculate which one's the fastest. To help other struggling people leveling up in this game, I'll go ahead and analyze the best way to level up. In this video we'll cover Riku, as he's by far the one that's most annoying to level up. Riku is a completely different beast than Sora. His entire style of playing revolves around breaking the opponent's cards to get into dark mode. Riku is given a new deck for each world and he can't get new fancy slides like Sora, which means that he's stuck with spamming his normal attack cards and then using slides in dark mode. Riku has the highest cards in the last world, which is also the place that the enemies give the most EXP, so choosing Castle Oblivion as the grinding place is a no-brainer. A lot of people recommend using the Lexius enemy card that has a possibility of instant killing an enemy on the combat finisher. We won't do that, as choosing the card takes a little bit of time and the card will be redundant, as our finisher should be able to kill the enemy anyway. Before I get into the technique, I feel it's important to mention that the data have been gathered from playing on hard mode. Now, without further ado, let's jump into it. Make your way to the entrance of the Castle Oblivion world and go to the end of the first room and use a strong initiative card. This card lowers the health of the first wave of enemies if you strike first. In this room we have two types of enemies you can encounter, the Neo Shadows and the Red Nocturnes. The two enemies each have three possible waves you can encounter. The Red Nocturnes first possible encounter, which we'll call A, consists of two Red Nocturnes, two Green Requirements, two Wyverns, two Shadows and two Neo Shadows. The second possibility B consists of a first wave with two Red Nocturnes, five shadows, two new shadows, and the second wave of two wizards and two wyverns. The last possibility C is three wizards, three red nocturnes, three green requirements. When hitting a new shadow, we again have three possibilities. Two of them is A and B from before, and then we have a new one, D, that consists of two wyverns and three new shadows. This whole strategy builds on the fact that if you run from a fight, the enemy will still be there to summon a new wave of Heartless to kill. If we kill all but one Heartless and leave the encounter, then we maximize the experience gained without killing the source. Now I'll show you the moves that'll get rid of the four different waves as fast as possible. Let's start with wave A. Run up to the new shadow on the right while stocking the first three cards. Make sure you stand right in front of the new shadow and pretty close before you use the stock cards. When the stock cards have been used, you should be rid of the new shadow, two shadows and all of the nocturnes and requirements. Now stock the next three cards and run up to the last new shadow, so you are approximately facing the closest wall. Use the cards and only a Y1 should be left. The stocking of cards is to make sure the new shadows don't break them. Possibility B is not as nice, as it has multiple waves and can't be completed as fast. This scenario is pretty hard to control, so either leave the encounter or run up to the enemies and unleash 3 stock cards 2-3 to three times before leaving. The new wave of Heartless will have full health and will take too long to kill. When leaving, make sure to not run in a straight line, so you potentially can avoid some attacks. In possibility C, you want to run up between the two requirements closest to the center and jump while attacking to get rid of the two heartless. Attack again to kill the last requirement and use another attack to kill two nocturnes. When on the ground again, run up to the wizard in the center and make a short jump while attacking to kill it. Attack two more times to kill the remaining wizards. 
For the wave D, you want to run up slightly to the right of the new shadow in the middle. Use three stuck cards to get rid of three new shadows and a Y1. Now that we have covered the fastest way to kill each of the possible waves of enemies, we will take a look at what yields the most EXP over time. The hardlers we are going to fight yield the following amount of experience when slain. y yield 270, Wizards and New Shadows yield 269, while Shadows, Red Nocturnes and Green Requirements all yield 80 experience. In the possible encounters A, B, C and D, we have the Hardler shown here. And with the technique shown previously, we will be able to take care of these Hardlers. This means the encounters will yield this much XP if all goes well. A. 1288 B. 669 C. 1207 D. 1078 I've been timing myself going through these different encounters, and here's my average time. For A, I use 70.21 seconds, B takes 16.58 seconds, C is 16.67 seconds, and D is 13.68 seconds. The time I use getting in and out of encounters depends on the type of enemy. Red Nocturnes takes about 4.28 seconds, while New Shadows only take 2.11 seconds. Now that we have the time it takes to complete an encounter and engage in a new one, we can find how much experience we get per second. We simply divide the experience yielded by an encounter with the time it takes to complete the encounter. When fighting red nocturnes, the experience per second of the different waves are A is 59.9, B is 32.1 and C is 57.6. For encounters with the new shadows, the experience per seconds is this. For A it's 66.7, for B it's 35.8, and for D it's 68.3. If we assume that the possibilities of getting into each of the encounters are equal, the average experience per second of fighting red nocturnes is 49.9, while fighting new shadows is 56.9. The fastest way is clearly to fight the new shadows. Now the interesting part is then how long it takes to get to level 99 using this method. I've calculated the time every 10 level and this is the result. In this model there's no room for mistakes, so to take into account mistakes you should probably add 2 to 3 hours. I did the exact same thing for the Lexus method, even using a martial waking card to ensure card breaks. The Lexus method has an average experience per second of 44.4. While that is still pretty good, it is a fair bit slower. If you are done with the story at level 40, it will take you 7 hours and 37 minutes to get to level 99 with the Lexus method. While the strong initiative method is 1.5 hours quicker. So let's summarize. The quickest way to level up Riku is to use the strong initiative method on the new shadows as shown earlier. Doing it this way will gain you approximately 56.9 experience per second, which means that using this method non-stop without error from level 40 will take about 6 hours. Accounting for errors and other factors will put the final time at about 8 hours. Anyway, that's about all I've got for this time. The next video on leveling up Sora and Rechain of Memories will be up soon. See ya!